Are you a Twitter user? Following Musk's Twitter acquisitions were reports of an increase in problematic content. This, along with Musk's sudden radical changes to the workforce, led many advertisers to pull out, threatening Twitter's main source of revenue. Hey, and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Preston. I'm a professional recruiter in the technology industry. Between mass layoffs and hiring freezes and the uncertainty of a potential recession looming on the horizon, the technology industry is certainly facing extreme hardships right now. This is especially true of Twitter, where Elon Musk's actions as a social media platform's new owner are honestly raising eyebrows and further complicating their already strained position. If you're a Twitter user, you may have noticed some changes occurring on the platform over the past few weeks. Even if you don't use it, you've undoubtedly heard about Elon Musk's massive buyout of the company and some of the controversy he's already generated in his new role. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of the background of the story and then some more recent developments that deserve some deeper exploration. But before we get started, please consider supporting a fellow recruiter. Give us a like, subscribe, click that bell. It really means a lot. Way back in May, I asked the question, is Elon Musk trying to take over Twitter? And for a while, we weren't sure what his goals were. It began when he purchased the majority 9.2% stake in the company. He was invited to Twitter's board of directors and seeming enthusiastic about working with them to make improvements to the platform. He described his interest in improving free speech on the platform, opening it up to a wide array of voices and ensuring they were given a fair chance at being seen. A few days later, however, he declined to join Twitter's board and said opting to purchase the company outright for around $54 a share or a total of $44 billion. Twitter was initially resistant, even adopting policies that would sink the company if Elon went through with the purchase. Eventually though, they gave in and Elon was prepared to finalize the purchase. The story takes a rather confusing twist though when suddenly Musk tried to back out of the deal. Twitter argued that it was too late and threatened legal action if Musk withdrew his offer, which was already pending. After a month's contention, the deal was finalized in late October and Musk became the new owner of Twitter. He certainly wasted no time making changes. Just a week after the purchase was made, an email was sent out to every employee of the company, stating that over half of Twitter's workforce were being immediately let go. The move even prompted lawsuits. I recommend going back and watching my video on the ongoing Twitter lawsuits for more information about that. Also, following Musk's Twitter acquisitions were reports of an increase in problematic content. This, along with Musk's sudden radical changes to the workforce, led many advertisers to pull out, threatening Twitter's main source of revenue. Changes begin. The blue checks. Twitter users are undoubtedly familiar with the platform's verification system. Public figures like politicians and celebrities could apply for a blue check mark next to their name to confirm that they're the real deal. The system was one of Musk's first points of contention. Initially, he proposed charging verified users a $20 fee in order to maintain their status, drawing ire from general users and even celebrities, notably legendary horror author Stephen King. King argued that this was a terrible move as it was the users like him who write and provide content that keep the platform alive. Musk ignored King's broader point but suggested an $8 price tag, stating, we need to pay the bill somehow. Keeping this response in mind as it will become important in determining Musk's intentions later. He eventually announced his intentions to roll out blue check marks to subscribers to Twitter's premium service, Twitter Blue, for $8 a month. He painted the move as bringing power to the people and overhauling a BS system. But the changes quickly became problematic. Trolls were quick to take advantage of the new system, creating fake accounts, impersonating public figures, and purchasing a blue check mark in order to confuse general users. Some posted a harmless, lighthearted, and humorous content, while others resorted to controversial and inflammatory statements. According to Musk, these accounts were being dealt with, but apparently not fast enough. Attempts were made to mitigate the issue first by restricting Twitter blue to accounts made before November 9th. This had little effect because older accounts were still engaging in the behavior. Twitter also briefly experimented with a new gray check mark, meant to confirm that an account was official, much in the same way that blue check marks once confirmed from verified users. Musk stated he was unhappy with these gray checks and removed them only hours after they had been implemented. Over the next few days, Musk's new blue check system continued to change in reactions to misuse by trolls. Musk considered clarifying the difference between a paid blue check and a legacy check carried over from the previous system, but soon retracted those changes as well. Instead, gray check marks came back, this time under the names of advertisers and politicians. So what's the deal with Musk's obsessions with Twitter's verification system? It seems to 
stem from a fundamental misunderstanding of its use. Musk sees blue checks as a status symbol, an indication that the user is important in some way. In many cases, this is true. But this view ignores the importance of identity verification. The blue checks exist to ensure other users that the account is official. Due to this misinterpretation, Musk sees blue checks as a potential source of revenue. He can hand out a perceived status symbol in exchange for a small fee. Remember, Musk's statement to Stephen King about needing to pay the bills, this is where it becomes very important. The fact of the matter is that Musk overpaid for Twitter by like a lot. That $44 billion price tag blows away even the most generous estimates of Twitter's value, which most analysts agree is around $25 billion. While Musk paints his changes to the verification system as altruistic, it's more likely that he needs some way of recouping the massive amount he owes to investors that funded the purchase. Keep this in mind as we continue to explore his first month as Twitter's new owner. Musk's ultimatum. On Wednesday, November 16th, all Twitter employees received an email from Musk with the dramatic subject line, quote, a fork in the road, end quote. It read in part, quote, going forward to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity, only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. If you are sure that you want to be part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below." End quote. Musk concluded the email by stating not clicking on the provided quote yes link would be an effective resignation and employees who chose to leave would receive three months severance pay. Needless to say, this email drew ire and criticism from a wide variety of outlets. Twitter's workforce already facing low morale over the previous layoffs were certainly not enthusiastic about long high intensity hours. Perhaps unsurprisingly, mass resignations began with exiting employees opting for three months severance over Elon's still unclear vision for Twitter 2.0. Here are what some ex-Twitter employees had to say to CNN about their departure. Quote, I don't want to stick around to build a product that's being poisoned from the inside out, end quote. Quote, people don't want to sacrifice their mental health and family lives to make the richest man in the world even richer, end quote. Immediately, concerns were raised about Twitter's increasingly strained ability to maintain and moderate its system. It's important to remember though, just how utterly massive and complex Twitter is, and between implementing Musk's spur of the moment changes in the platform, many speculated that Twitter's workforce will become increasingly strained as they continue to hemorrhage employees. Nowhere was this problem more apparent than inside Twitter. Employees described confusion and disarray as they struggle to make sense of Musk's actions with little to no guidance. Some employees in the process of exiting the company report that they are owed thousands of dollars in out-of-pocket work expenses that were supposed to be reimbursed. Requests to settle these have gone mostly unanswered, putting some employees in really tough financial positions. The results of Musk's sudden and radical changes to Twitter have been largely negative. Users have already reported an increase in toxic posts and potentially harmful misinformation. As trolls test the waters to see just how how much they can get away with, whatever is left of Twitter's moderation team will become increasingly strained. This isn't just terrible for Twitter's public image, it also directly impacts one of their main sources of revenue, advertising. In fact, a Media Matters for America report found that 50 of Twitter's top 100 advertisers responsible for $2 billion in ad revenue in 2020 had pulled out of Twitter. Companies including Jeep, Ford, Chevrolet, and Chipotle released statements addressing the withdrawals from Twitter's advertisements, citing an increase in controversy surrounding the website. Perhaps this is just another reason why Musk seems so desperate to develop new revenue streams. Some users have also begun to leave the platform. As you can imagine, there are several social media platforms that are hoping to take its place, including Post, Hive, and most notably, Mastodon. Although only time will tell which, if any, end up taking Twitter's place. So, are you a Twitter user? Do you have any thoughts on Musk's takeover or his handling of the company thus far? I would love to hear from you. If you like this video and want to see more like it, feel free to give us a big like, subscribe, click that bell. It really means a lot. Feel free to also follow me at Preston underscore Park as I try my best to also post behind the scenes content daily. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you on the next one.